I'm Gary Bouton and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month we're going to return to animation. Last year we had some fun with beginning steps and flash files. This month we're going to go intermediate. I've set up a fairly intricate scene for you to follow along and complete and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So come on! To begin this month, go to ZaraZone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. This is the scene I'm going to show you how to animate. I'll play the director, and I'll tell you how to move the actors around. First, let me show you how the scene you downloaded is built, so that it contains valid flash elements. Open the Pencil Countdown Zara file now, and the first thing you'll notice is the pencil. You can move it around if you like. What I'm going to show you here is that if if you control click on the drop shadow, what I've done is I've created a flat partial transparency. That's valid in flash files. You can't do a gradient. So this so far works. Here's a wireframe view of the countdown. We've got three, two, one, and as you can see here, there are rectangles that are hiding the numbers. And what you're going to do in phases is reveal the uh, three, two, one countdown as the pencil appears to draw it. Now you can see here that the 3, 2, 1 are also partially transparent so that the lines show through. The lines are full opacity on the paper. If you open the page in Layer Gallery now, press F10, you'll see the order of shapes in this document. The ruled lines are toward the top, the shapes, which are the numbers, are toward the bottom, and the rectangles you'll move to reveal the numbers as the pencil moves along are toward the top. The first thing you want to do in this document is to name your actors. Your actors are the shapes that you move around. Without naming them, Zara can't create smooth in-between frames. With the selector tool, select the pencil and move it toward the top left. Once you've done that, Go to wireframe view and let's position this over near the beginning of the three and that's going to be our first frame and you know that there's a shape underneath that will reveal it. Now right click over the pencil and from the context menu choose name. In the name dialog box type something evocative such as pencil, click add and you can close it now. Now that this actor, this pencil, has been named, it can be animated in Zara. However, there are other actors, the rectangles, that need to be named so that they can be moved and reveal the numbers. Fortunately, I've done that for you. As you can see here in the name gallery, I've named the top piece to the three, three, one. This one is three, two. And so it follows that this last piece would be named 1, 2. Okay, the rectangles that are going to move have been named for you. You've named the pencil, so now it's time for the fun animation part. Press Shift F12 to open the Animation Frames Gallery. By default, the duration of the first frame you have there is 0.5 seconds. We want something a little shorter, so double click that first frame title, and in the Animation Properties box, type 0.2 seconds. Click Apply and you can click Close. Now every frame that you copy from now on, click Copy and you've got a second frame and that's also 0.2 seconds. In Wireframe View, let's move the pencil over to the right on the top of the three. Let's go back to Quality View and move that piece 3, 1 over to reveal the top of the three. Now there's a little bit of garbage that piece 3, 2 is providing. So what we want to do is move that and you can rotate in addition to scale and move shapes and those all fit within the parameters of a shockwave file. I'm going to move the pencil down a little bit to hide that top. Click copy. We have a new frame to edit that's a duplicate. Let's move that second piece 3, 2 down as well as the pencil. Let's click copy once more and now it's time to finish the three by moving along a bowl shape. Now shockwave files like to move linearly. We're moving in an arc. So what you want to do is take this motion a little piece at a time. Move the large 3-1 piece down. Make sure the other pieces are out of the way. That much of the arc is good for a frame. So let's click copy. And now in this frame reveal a little bit more of the arc. Move the pencil down. And we look good. Click copy again and reveal this part of the arc. 
I'm moving small pieces away, click copy, and then we have this much of the arc. Click copy one more time, and I believe that completes the bowl of the three. And why don't you preview this piece by clicking on the uh, preview SWF icon up on the animation bar. As you can see here, I've got two tweening errors because I named things wrong, but I have no flash errors. Uh, so click OK in any event, and as you can see, that's a pretty good beginning to the animation. You've done the three. Now let's uh, work on the two to reveal the number two. So click copy, and I'm going to move the animation frame out of the way here. And go to wireframe view to see where the beginning of the two is. And move the pencil and move any objects that shouldn't be there totally out of the scene. So we're beginning at the two. Let's go back to uh, full view. And uh, I'm going to uh, copy twice so that there's a pause between drawing the three and drawing the two. Now I'm going to move uh, piece 2, 1, I believe, and rotate a little bit to reveal part of the 2. Move the pencil over a little. And once we've copied, I'm going to rotate this piece to reveal more of the 2. Again, we're doing an arc, so we do it in little motions, little steps. Press copy. And let's go to wireframe view and see where the pencil needs to go. That looks pretty good. And uh, what I'm going to do is move piece 2 1 down, press copy. And uh, again, I'm working between wireframe and quality view just so I can see what needs to be moved. You can see me moving the rectangle in wireframe view. Press copy again. Let's go to wireframe view and move the pencil way down because this arc segment is almost linear and I'm moving that unwanted piece away. Let's select piece 2, 2 and move it down. You can see the pencil is hiding most of this. Click copy. And what I'm doing here is I'm rotating the pencil. And I'd like you to do that too. Keep the, keep the nib on the line. What I'm accomplishing by rotating the pencil a little bit is that you notice that the uh, pencil is bent and when you rotate during this drawing the pencil seems to take on a life of its own. It, it, it becomes more animated than simply drawing these numbers. So keep that in mind when you're animating things is that you can uh, rotate objects a little bit and give them a little bit more life. Okay, so we're down here and I want to click copy and, whoops, I selected the wrong thing. There, I want the pencil, and I'm going to rotate it back a little bit. Move it over there. So uh, you can see those two frames. The pencil rotates a little bit. And after you've clicked copy, move the uh, pencil over to the end of the two. And let's preview three and two. Now you notice a little bit of a glitch at that too, so that's something that um, I'm going to go back and correct. If this is happening to you, what you want to do is go back to the beginning of the two, and I moved that piece a little. You can see that piece needs to be hidden that's uh, being revealed, so if you hide it with the pencil, I think that's a lot smoother animation. And you can see the uh, slight rotation of the pencil and the 3-2 animation. Let's copy, and uh, we're in the home run now. We're moving over to the, uh, to the number one. So start your, uh, start your stroke there, click copy, twice, because you want a little pause as it moves over. So move it over to the right of the one, and move the 1-1 one, one piece over to reveal that part of the one. Click copy again, and piece one, two, which is actually the last piece. You can see I'm revealing some of it. And if you do this linear motion in more than one frame, the pencil appears to slow down. So when it slows down and speeds up, you have a little more realistic animation. It has a little more character, a little more flavor, a little more like traditional animation. So I'm going to copy again, and uh, one of our last frames here is to move the pencil 
away, so it's clearly 3, 2, 1, and that will be the end of the animation. What I'm going to do is I'm increasing the value here at the very end for the very last frame so that there's a pause between the last frame and when the animation cycles again to the beginning. So, given that, uh, what I think we can do now is preview. When you're happy with your work, you can get your animation out of Zara by choosing File, Export Animation, and then from this box you can choose Shockwave, Animated GIF, or AVI file format. I hope you've had fun with this intermediate adventure of animation this month. Think of the variations that you can do with this technique of reveal, and I'll see you next month at...